Is there a story in your glass? There is in mine. And it's in our big ten. Do you know one of the things I love about whiskey is it inspires stories, it inspires a creativity, especially within me. Because when I'm tasting, smelling, especially when I'm with a friend who also appreciates whiskey, you kind of bounce these ideas off each other and you you tell each other this story with the smells and the taste. It, it ends up, it, it can be you know, an actual story that isn't too difficult to put together. And that's exactly what happened uh, when my friend Russell and I drank uh, an Ardbeg 10. It's my first Ardbeg. Um, in fact, it's the only Ardbeg I've ever tried. And I hadn't tried it up until that point because, as everybody knows, I'm not the massive kind of peat fan. But he brought this one out after so many drinks of so many other whiskies. So we were quite drunk, but we, we 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 started telling each other this sort of story when we were smelling it and tasting it. So there is a story in this little bottle of our bag, and I'm going to tell you it. But first, I'm going to pour it, and I'm going to smell it, and I'm going to taste it, and I'm going to remind myself about the story. And it's just... I'm not sure there's many things in this world that can truly inspire you. And let me tell you, this little dram here inspired me so much so that I couldn't sleep one night. I had to get up uh, midnight, one o'clock in the morning, and I had to write down this story rattling about my head. I just... It, it, it's a magical thing, it really is. I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but when there's something that can give you true inspiration in your life, I, I don't think you should um, overlook that or or treat it lightly. Um, we'll just we'll let stay there, a little bottle of our bag there. So I haven't reviewed this one, so I guess what this is is it's an our bag ten review, but it's also. the launch of a new playlist which do you know what I'm going to I'm going to keep this separate I'm going to do I'm going to do the the story as a separate thing um because I just want it to be a succinct uh, short kind of video so if you like this review and you want to hear the story of our big 10 then head over to my playlist the other video um a story in a glass that's the playlist, a story in a glass. And I think that's what makes a truly exceptional whiskey is when there is a story in the glass. And yeah. Obviously getting the, getting the smoke, but there is a salty rope Kind of smell, briny. Peaty, earthy, warm, kind of spicy almost. And it's amazing what you can get sometimes because I'll tell you what, I'll tell you part of the story. Um, one of the smells that we got um, was well, I'll, I'll go. I'll go through a couple of smells that I did get that night. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to get them just now, but you never know. So what I did get was like a, a smoked fish, um, but a real light, not like a ugh, fish kind of smell. It was more like mm, it's like a, it's like if you've ever smelt like a, a smoker when somebody's smoked some fish in it. It's not the actual fish. It's like a real light kind of smell, and you can imagine that you can. You can get that with the smoke in this. It's, it's not an, it's not an, a real acrid kind of campfire smoke. This is a it is peaty. But 
there is an element of a a nice smoke in there, you know, a, a smoke that you would use to like smoke cheese or smoke fish. Uh, one of the other things that we got, <laughs> which was really weird, uh, I really hope I get it again, um, but I, if I, I've anticipated not getting it, is uh, tomato plants. I don't know why, I don't know why we got it, but oh my god, tomato plants. I'm definitely getting the earthiness, I'm getting that kind of warm earth, you know, when you go into a greenhouse and it's got that kind of earthy, composty kind of smell. I, th I think, do you know what, I think I could, I know why we got it. And it's because there is like a freshness to it, like a, a vegetable-y, fruity kind of freshness. There is that whole kind of boat kind of feel to it, the rope, the fish, the, you know, the saltiness. All in all, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a massive peat fan, as everybody knows. I'm not a massive smoke fan, but this is, um, this is really nice. I, I do enjoy an R Big Ten. I'm not sure I would I would give it to a, a beginner unless they like that smoky flavour or or the peaty flavour. It is one of the immediate things that really hits home. Um but it's it's very well balanced. The the smoke isn't isn't too acrid, it's not too oily. I don't Think that it really sticks around my mouth as much as some of the others, uh, some of the other uh, Iowas. There is a sweetness there. The sweetness is um, light, but well balanced within the smoke and the peat. It's, it's not a particularly sweet dram <clears throat> on the taste I mean on the palate it's uh, it's there, there is obviously an element of sweetness there but oh yeah it's got that it's got a bit of spice there a nice nice heat going down So I pass it underneath my tongue. That's normally when I can get the oak spice and the real kind of woody flavours. And uh, yeah, it's for a ten as well. You know, let's not forget it. It is it is a ten. It's not spent too long in in casks. I always find it interesting with these ones, with the uh, the peatier ones. It it can be a real dominant kind of smell, especially. And, and you've really got to work to, to try and get around it. I mean, some of the sweet ones are kind of like that as well. They can be like overly sweet on one kind of area, especially like honey. You get some real honey ones and you struggle to kind of get past that to find any other kind of sweetness, any other kind of fruit or anything. So it can be the same on, on both sides. But I like I like that technique of uh, blowing in the glass. I think it creates uh, it creates a bit of condensation within the the glass, and I think that sometimes it, it traps some of the the uh, bigger, punchier kind of smells, and it lets some of the the lighter ones come out. Yeah, I'm getting more of the like a tarry rope. Yeah, you know? it's almost like a almost but not quite i think it's obviously mixed with the the earthiness and the peat and the smoke but it's almost like bitumen i don't know you know you've probably never worked on the roads and um, but if you have you'll know what that bitumen smells like or if you've driven past a, a road that's getting laid and you get that that bitumen kind of smell almost like that maybe like a 
One of the sweeter notes coming out of that might be licorice. Yeah. It's an interesting one, really interesting. And uh, I can I can I can see why we got lots of different smells out of it where we did, you know. I'm not I'm not getting the the big the big punch of uh, tomato plants like I was before. Uh, but you know this is obviously a, a freshly poured little uh, little bottle here. So I think uh, the one that Russell and I had had been sitting for a while, had been open for a little bit, so it had some it's had some air time. But like I said, there's there's a definite kind of freshness, a definite earthiness, um, which you could attribute it to, say, a greenhouse with some uh, tomato plants growing in it. And um, yeah, why not? Why not? Tell yourself these stories. You know, lose yourself in the smell, lose yourself in the taste. Sit back, close your eyes, dream, think, and write it down, if you if you feel like it. But yeah, this is this is definitely one of the more interesting, um, heavily peated kind of malts for me. I, I am very interested in kind of climbing the ranks now with this. And I think I mean that's that's what I like about um, a decent distillery is they put something out. Um, again, it's forty six percent. So, there you go. That extra six percent definitely um, makes a difference. Um, you know, so it's. I like it the the bottom of the core range in terms of age statements. I like it when uh, distilleries do something good. Um, otherwise, you're like, why am I going to try the twelve, the fifteen, the whatever you else you've got, the eighteen? People are raving about the twenty one. It's like, well, great, but the twenty one's expensive and. You know, all I can afford is the ten kind of thing. It's um, you know, you've got to distilleries just they have to find that balance and they have to start putting or they have they have to put stuff out at at the base level that encourages you to spend that kind of money, because I'm not going to spend two hundred quid on a bottle of malt if I haven't enjoyed the ten and the twelve. I'm just not going to risk it. I'm not going to do it despite what everybody says. I'm going to be like, well, maybe it's not just for me. You know, I'll just get something I like. I'll I'll go for what I like. I'll spend two hundred quid on a distillery I know I like. And obviously, not everybody can like everything, but you know, there's there's other peated malts on Isla on Isla, of course. And you know, I I think I think our bag is now the the standout one for me. I still like my my Brueghlari and uh, uh, I don't know. I was kind of disappointed with uh, Kiloman. I like my uh, Lafrog Ten. It's a bit it's a bit oilier than this, which I don't always like. Um, here's to Ardbeg. Here's to stories. Here's to stories in your glass. It's a great nip, it really is. And I think if anybody's looking to get into a peaty or a, a smoky one, I have done a video on like bridge whiskies um, that'll kind of get you there. I think, uh, you know, I was, I, I called it a journey to Laphroaig because I see that as being one of the smokier ones. I'm not sure if it is necessarily anymore. It's, you know, it's quite well balanced actually, but this is, for me, I think Hardbeck is, it just, it does something for me that Laphroaig doesn't. Um, like last time I had a Laphroaig, I had a Laphroaig 10, just last night actually, 
and I didn't tell myself any stories. There was no stories involved in drinking the, the Lefroig 10. I don't know why. It's nice enough. I like it. It's probably the best Lefroig I've tried. But this is uh, this is pretty special. Uh, I, I'd always want one of these on on my shelf. And do you know what? I'm actually having I'm I'm having quite a good time with tens at the moment. I mean, obviously the Lefroig ten is good, um, but the Glen Cadam ten, the Talisker ten, um, the this 10, obviously, the Ardbeg 10, and the, I don't have it here, oh no, the, the Glendronach 8, actually, not even a 10, what other 10s have I had? But the 10s, the 10s seem to be uh, doing pretty well at the moment. Anyway, cheers. Here's to Ardbeg 10, here's to telling stories, here's to a story in your glass. There's a story in your glass. It might not be Ardbeg 10, but there's a story. <laughs>